Like, I don't mind living like this, but it's the stupid people that just want to stare. You know what I'm saying? And they're in their fucking tinted car. They want to stare. You know what I mean? That's people annoying me more than anything. But Where's my books? Oh. I don't mind if it's a woman, because a man was made for a woman, and a woman made for a man. I guess I just don't like men, you know? They annoy me. Addy. In the afternoon when school was out and the last one had left with his little dirty snuffling nose, instead of going home, I would go down to the, to the hill to the spring where I could be quiet and hate them. <laughs> It would be quiet there then with the water bubbling up and away and the sun slanting quiet in the trees and the quiet smelling of damp and rotting leaves and new earth, especially in the early spring, for it was worse then. I could just remember how my father used to say that the reason for living was to get ready to stay dead a long time. And when I would have to look at them day after day, each with his and her secret and selfish thought and blood strange to each other, blood and strange to mine, I think that this seemed to be the only way I could get ready to stay dead. I would hate my father for having ever planted me. I would look forward to the times when they when they faulted so I could whip them. When the switch fell, I could feel it upon my flesh. When it welted and ridged, it was my blood that ran. And I would think with each blow of the switch, now you are aware of me. Now I am something in your secret and selfish life who have marked your blood with my own forever and ever. And so I took Ansi. I saw him pass the schoolhouse three or four times before I learned that he was driving four miles out of his way to do it. I noticed then how he was beginning to hump a tall man and a tall a tall man and young, so that he looked already like a tall bird hunched in the cold weather on the wagon seat. He would pass the schoolhouse, the wagon creaking slow, his head turning slow to watch the door of the schoolhouse as the wagon passed, until he went on around the curve and out of sight. One day I went to the door and stood there when he passed. When he saw me he looked quickly away and did not look back again. In the early spring, it was worse. Sometimes I thought that I could not bear it lying in bed at night with the wild geese going north and their honking coming faint and high and wild out of the wild darkness. And during the day, it would seem as though I couldn't wait for the last one to go so I could go down to the spring. And so when I looked up that day and saw Ansi standing there in his Sunday clothes, turning his hat round and round in his hands, I said, If you got any women, folks, why in the world don't they make you get your hair cut? I ain't got none, he said. Then he said suddenly, driving his eyes at me like two hounds in a strange yard. That's what I come to see you about. <laughs> and make you hold your shoulders up, I said. You haven't got any, but you've got a house. They tell me you've got a house and a good farm, and you live there alone doing for yourself, do you? He just looked at me, turning that hat in his hands. A new house, I said. Are you going to get married? And he said again, holding his eyes to mine. That's what I come to see you about. Later he told me, I ain't got no people, so that won't be no worry to you. I don't reckon you can say, say the same. No, I have people in Jefferson. His face fell a little while. I got a little property. I'm forehanded. I got a good, honest name. I know how town folks are, but maybe they, or maybe when they talk to me, anyway, his face fell a little. Well, after she said, no, I have people in Jefferson. He said, his face fell a little. Well, I got a little property. I'm forehanded. I got a good, honest name. I know how town folks are, but maybe when they talk to me, they might listen, I said, but they'll be hard to talk to. He was watching my face. They're in the cemetery. But your living kin, he said, they'll be different. Well, they, I said, I don't know. I never had any other kind. So I took Ansi, and when I knew that I had cash, I knew that living was terrible and that this was the answer to it. That was when I learned that words are no good, that words don't ever fit when they don't ever fit even what they are trying to say at. When he was born, I knew that motherhood was invented by someone who had to have a word for it because the ones that had the children didn't care whether there was a word for it or not. I knew that fear was invented by someone that had never had the fear, pride, who never had the pride. I knew that it had had been not that they had dirty noses, but that we had had to use one another by words like spiders dangling by their mouths from a beam, swinging and twisting and never touching, and that only through the blows of the switch could my blood and their blood flow as one stream. I knew that it had been not that my aloneness had to be violated over and over each day, but that it had never been violated until cash came, not even by Ansi in, in the nights. He had a word too, love, he called it. But I had been used to words for a long time. I knew that that word was like the others, just a shape to fill the crack. And when the right time came, you wouldn't need a word for that any any more than for pride or fear. Cash did not need to say it to me, nor I to him. And I would say, let Ansi use it if he wants to. So that is what Ansi or love, love or Ansi, it didn't matter. 
I would think that even while I lay with him in the dark and cash asleep in the cradle within the swing of my hand, I would think that if he were to wake and cry, I would suckle him too, answer your love, it didn't matter. My loneliness had been violated and then made whole again by the violation. Time, antsy, love, what you will, outside the circle. Then I found that I, I had Daro. At first I would not believe it, then I believed that I would kill Ansi. It was as though he had tricked me, hidden within a word like within a paper screen and struck me in the back through it. But then I realized that I had been tricked by words older than Ansi or love and that the same word had tricked me, Ansi too, and that my revenge would be that. He would never know I was taking revenge. And when Daro was born, I asked Ansi to promise to take me back to Jefferson when I died because I knew that my father had been right. Even when he couldn't have known he was right, he was right any more than I could have known I was wrong. Nonsense, Auntie said. You and me ain't nigh done chapping yet. With just two. You and me ain't nigh done ch chapping yet. Meaning like young chap. You know, like having kids with just two. He did not know that he was dead then. Sometimes I would lie by him in the dark. Hearing the land that was now. Hearing the land that was now of my blood and flesh. And I would think, Auntie, why Auntie? Why are you Auntie? I would think about his name until after a while I could see the word as a shape of vessel. And I would watch him liquefy and flow into it like cold molasses flowing out of the darkness in the vessel. Until the jar stood full and motionless, a significant shape profoundly without life like an empty door frame. And then I would find that I had forgotten the name of the jar. I would think the shape of my body where I used to be a virgin is in the shape of a... And I couldn't think, Ansi, couldn't remember Ansi. It was not that I could think of myself as no longer unvirgin because I was three now. And when I would think Cash and Daryl that way until their names would die and solidify into a shape and then fade away, I would say, all right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they call them. And so when Cora Tool would tell me I was not a, a true mother, I would think how words go straight up in a thin line, quick and harmless, and how terribly doing goes along the earth, clinging to it, so that after a while the two lines are too far apart for the same person to straddle from one to the other, and that sin and love and fear are just sounds that people who never sin nor love nor fear have for what they never had and cannot have until they forget the words like Cora who can never even cook yeah Cora's mean bro people try to pu push you on religion and stuff she would tell me that what I owed to my children and to Ansi and to God I gave Ansi the children I did not ask for them I did not even ask him for what he could have given me not Ansi that was my duty to him to not ask that and that duty I fulfilled I would be I I would let him be the shape and the echo of his word. There was more than, that was more than he asked because he would not have asked for that and 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 been antsy, using himself so with the word. And then he died. He did not know when he was dead. I would lie by him in the dark, hearing the dark land talking to God, or talking of God's love and His beauty and His sin, hearing the dark voicelessness in which the words are the deeds, and the other words that are not deeds that are just the gaps in people's lacks coming down like the cries of the geese out of the wild darkness and the old terrible nights fumbling at deeds like orphan like orphans to whom i pointed out in the crowd two faces and told that is your father your mother i believe that i had found it i believe that that i believe i believe that the reason was the duty to the alive okay i believe that the reason was the duty to the, the alive to the terrible blood the red bitter flood boiling through the land i would think of sin as i would think of the clothes we both wore in the world's face of the circum circumspection necessary because he was he and i was i the sin the more utter and terrible since he was the instrument ordained by god who created the sin to sanctify that sin he had created while i waited for him in the woods waiting for him before he saw me i would think of him as dressed in sin i would think of him as thinking of me as dressed also in sin he the more beautiful since the garment which he had exchanged for sin was sanctified i would think of the sin as garments which we would remove in order to shape and coerce the terrible blood to the forlorn echo of the dead word high in the air. Then I will lay with Ansi again. I did not lie to him. I just refused, just as I refused my breast to cash and doll after the time was up, hearing the dark land talking, the voiceless speech. I hid nothing. I tried to deceive no one. I would not have cared. I merely took the precautions that he thought necessary for his sake. Not for my safety, but just as I wore clothes in the world's face, and I would think then when Cora talked to me of how the high dead words in time seemed to lose even the significance of their dead sound. Then it was over, over in the sense that he was gone. I knew that, seeing him again, though I would, I would never again see him coming swift and secret to me in the woods, dressed in sin like a, like a gallant garment already blowing aside with the speed of his secret coming. 
But for me, it was not over. I mean, over in the sense of beginning and ending, because to me, there was no beginning or ending to anything then. I even held antsy, refraining still, not that I was holding him recessional, but as though nothing else had ever been. My children were of me alone, of the wild blood boiling along the earth, of me, and of all that lived, of none and of none and of all. Then I found that I had Jewel. When I waked to remember to discover it, he was two months gone. My father said that the reason for living is getting ready to stay dead. I knew at last what he meant, and that he could not have known what he, he meant himself, because a man cannot because a man cannot know anything about cleaning up the house afterward, and so I have cleaned my house with Jewel. I lay by the lamp holding on my own head, watching him cap cap and suitor, S-U-T-U-R-E. Um, I lay by the lamp holding up my own head, watching him cap and suitor it before he breathed. The wild blood boiled away in the sound of its seas, and there was only the milk warm and calm and I lying calm in the slow silence, getting ready to clean my house. I give Auntie Dewey Dow to negative Jewel. Oh, I gave Auntie Dewey Dow to negative Jewel. Then I gave him Vardaman to replace the child I had robbed him of. And now he has three children that are his and not mine. And then I could get ready to die. One day I was talking to Cora. She prayed for me because she believed I was blind to sin wanted me to kneel and pray too because people to whom sin is just because people to whom sin is just a matter of words to them salvation is just words too because people to whom sin is just a matter of words to them salvation is just words too <laughs> alright that was the end of uh, Eddie yes and Eddie A D A D D I E. that's the mom that's the one this whole story is about and now we have Whitfield, Mr. Whitfield. I think he's like the uh, pastor or something. Peace, y'all.